Halifax have just launched their latest house price index, and as expected from the right move asking price data in late 2022, the market has remained relatively flat. This graph shows that the monthly change from February 2023 is 0%. That means prices didn't go down, but they also didn't go up. This is after a period of decline where we saw prices go down 1.3% in December and 2.4% in November. And when you look at annual year-on-year -year growth rather than monthly, they reported that year on year in January 2023, the market is starting to cool down now and we're almost starting to hit that negative phase. So the reality is right now, house prices are starting to come down, but we've been in a really hot market. So we're only losing some of the gains that we've had in the past one to two years alone, rather than going back years and years into the past. And when you look at year on year growth, we started as high as 12% year on year, but right now we're on 1.9% year on year. So that is creeping down. So in some ways, yeah, Yes, the crash is starting, but there is an interesting question of whether this is going to be a crash or just a dip. And the reality is no one truly knows right now what's going to happen. We're still technically up year on year, meaning we're in a positive market. And until it starts to tip negative, and then we start to understand what's going to happen, only then can we start to talk about the bigger picture of where property prices have been, what they've done, and ultimately where they're heading. This graph from Halifax shows the average house price over the past 12 months. Yes, things went down here, but we're still higher than where we started. So if you bought at the peak of the market, it's only down a really small amount right now, assuming that you bought at the right price. If you overbid on your property, then yes, you might be at risk of some kind of negative equity, at least for the short term. Now, this fascinating graph from Zoopla shows the percentage change in the first three weeks of the year this year and the average from 2017 to 2019 against the five-year average. What this means is that the demand in the purple is actually 5% higher in 2023 compared to 2017 to 2019, which means we've had a stronger start to the year. But looking at a wider five-year average, the headline here is that demand is down by almost a quarter, but that factors in the huge pandemic boom. But then despite the better demand, we see that the number of sales agreed are lower and there's less supply going onto the market as more people stay put. And this is also demonstrated by less homes for sale versus 2018 to 2019 and the five year average. What does this all mean? Well, it means that demand is lower right now, but in context and relative to the post pandemic boom, we're kind of seeing normal levels. So this data is saying that it's down and it's negative, but in relation to everything else and when you zoom out and the five year picture, it's not as bad as things seem. Zoopla and Housetrack also came up with this interesting graph, which shows the comparison of December 2021 versus 2022. The year on year growth has dropped across the entire country, which is showing that we're in a slowdown right now. And when you look at the Q4 2022 total, some areas are starting to show negative declines, which matches the Halifax data, showing that the drop in the year on year growth was mainly caused and started in Q4 2022. Overall, HomeTrack think that we're gonna have a slow start to this year, but they do think it's going to pick up later this year. When we come out of the seasonal dip, interest rates start to come down, and I think there'll be more confidence in the market as people start to look again, especially when we hit the peak of the market, which is around spring to summer every single year, when activity is at its best, homes are looking their best as well, and the weather is a lot nicer. It has a massive impact on the market. But first, a massive thanks to this week's sponsor, Chip. With Chip, you can build your wealth hands-free with their AI to automatically move your savings and build your wealth. With the Bank of England rates so high right now and expected to climb, it means savings accounts are a great way to get interest on your money. The Chip Instant Access account is an easy access savings account, awarding a variable annual equivalent rate of 3.05%, up to £250,000, and it's paid out monthly. Chip aims to change their rate on the same day as the Bank of England so you don't have to chase the latest savings rates. I've put my renovation budget for the house in an instant savings account and making about £142 a month at the moment on interest and I can take it out anytime I need. This is way better than high street banks whose interest rates are still under 1% and they usually pay their interest annually and some even make you lock it away for years. Everything is FSCS eligible up to £85,000 so your money is completely safe. Check out the link in the description to open your account quickly and easily today or go to getchip.uk forward slash instant access account 
forward slash Matt Brighton. So understanding supply and demand, usually there's a lot of stability in terms of the market and it effectively creates this equilibrium of supply and demand. If there's a good amount of supply and a good amount of demand, naturally with inflation, house prices creep up nice and steadily over a longer period of time. On this graph, in the grey and light purple lines showing 2018 and 2019, they have a nice natural drop off during Christmas and then there's a new year surge. But then as the purple lines get darker, showing the more recent years, you can see the huge volatility in buyer demand dropping like a cliff in 2020 when the market halted, but then racing back up straight away to new highs. Then, after a slight seasonal dip in 2021, remained silly high and followed the same seasonal dip. And then, in 2022, started to take a different path. It peaked incredibly high in January and February, but then throughout the year, it really started to drop off, returning to the new pink line where we're now seeing similar buyer demand levels to what we saw pre-pandemic, which might give us more stability in terms of house prices. So what are the risks for buyers and sellers? Well, starting with the buyers, the very, very first one is that if you've just bought at the peak of the market and you massively overbid on the property and stretched your finances, there is a risk of negative equity for you right now because your property is going to go down in price with the market. But also, I think we might be shaking off a little bit of that extra additional demand that we saw in property prices as well. If you're staying in a house for the long term, then this won't be a massive concern or anything to worry about too soon. But if you've got a really short term fixed mortgage, for example, for the next two years, you're going to have to really think about what is the property value in two years time, even more so if you highly leveraged yourself with a 95% loan to value mortgage and you overbid on a property, that's where the real risk lies because that 5% could be wiped out very quickly, making it impossible to sell and remortgage. Most lenders, not all, but most of them won't give you a new mortgage if you're in negative equity, which means that you have to sit on the standard variable rate, which at the moment at the time of filming is almost 7% with Halifax, which is very, very high. So then this becomes an affordability problem. And what are the key risks for sellers? Well, it's been a seller's market for quite a while now, and that's because there hasn't been that much supply into the market, but that is starting to change in reverse, meaning because there are less buyers and now there are more houses, the property prices start to go down. Before, there was an average of about 14 homes per estate agent, whereas now we're looking at around 23 homes per estate agent, which is a lot more houses for fewer buyers looking on the market right now. And when you've got more supply and less demand, that will ultimately start to trend the prices down as people want really good bargains right now, because if your property is overpriced, they can just go to the next one. So the key risk here is making sure that you don't overprice your property. There is this thing with estate agents and sellers where they want to get the highest price possible. and are not quite accepting where the market is right now. So that's why you see properties go onto the market really high because the estate agents promise you that they can get you a massive amount for your property, but actually they then have to reduce it every single month, which looks really bad on Rightmove and Zoopla. If buyers use plugins on Chrome and they can start to see you're reducing your house price, they know you're struggling to sell and means they're in an even better position. And in reality, homeowners have made massive gains on their properties over the past few years. So there needs to be some degree of realism here in terms of whatever it's worth the day and putting it on the market to sell. So let's look at the type of housing demand. Now, in a previous video, I was talking about how flats might become more attractive in the future because they're priced lower than houses, therefore with higher interest rates become a more affordable option for first time buyers, where ultimately we're seeing demand of three bed houses decrease and we're seeing apartments and flats increase. And this data shows that 27% of new buyers are now looking at a one or two bed flat, which is up 22% since last year. In contrast, the demand for the three bed houses has also fallen five percentage points from 39%, although they are still the most in demand homes across the UK. And this is a trend we're seeing all over the country, including London, where one and two bed flats account for 49% of the demand, up from 42% just a year ago. And this kind of makes sense when the race for space is starting to end and people are heading back to cities because employers want them to go and work back in the offices. Those flats and apartments become more desirable once again, and they're cheaper amongst the higher interest rates. And then there's house prices. Looking at this graph from House Track shows that interestingly, when you look at the top 20 cities as an index in the UK, similar to Halifax, everything is just about up year on year, but those big healthy green bars are starting to disappear towards the end of 2022. This data is always a few months behind, but it's starting to suggest that we're in a flat market and we're a little bit uncertain on whether this is truly going to go negative, which is why you have to look at the difference between a month on month decline 
versus a year-on-year -year decline. They are two separate figures. Even when factoring all of this in, this fantastic graph from house price crash, if you factor in inflation to property prices, as in if property prices go up 10%, but inflation is also 10%, then the net real price increase is zero. Then based on the latest dip we've seen at the start of 2023, this is still only just above the 2008 low point. So there's a theory here that when you look at it in context of inflation and real terms, this suggests that we're not really in massively overinflated property prices just yet because of inflation. And therefore, when you see headlines talking about 40% drops, instead, Lloyd's Banking Group's prediction of 10% might be more realistic. Overall, I think there are three key things to consider here in the summary. Firstly is if you bought at the top of the market and you've got a two-year fixed mortgage, you need to start saving and overpaying your mortgage today. You need to really plan forwards and understand can I remortgage in two years and what is it going to cost? You've got the higher interest rates that might mess with affordability or you might have an equity problem because you highly leveraged yourself and went really hard on a property with the buying price, which means you might be trapped for the foreseeable future. Secondly, I think we're going to see some kind of stability in the market later this year. As the market picks up in spring and summer as it does every single year and with interest rates expected to go down below 4% or around that area, I think we'll see a little bit of a flat market for a while longer until we start to see is it going up or down. Also Ultimately, this could help minimize any major losses in the property market. And lastly, if you find a house on the market right now that you really love and you really like and you're going to stay there for a long time and it's not stretching your affordability too much, then go for it. There are some great deals out there already today because sellers are struggling to sell their houses for the prices they want. Ultimately, they are reducing the price, which means it's a good time for you to get in at a good price if you're buying right now. If you find this video useful, then check out this one here, which explores the 18-year property cycle and will help you understand how the property market is so cyclical and how it goes around in circles again and again. So click on this video here and check it out.